Hello, I'm Karen and in today's video, as you can see, we are making roses. This is the larger scale one, but the pattern that I'm actually doing today is to just to make the actual rose buds. Okay, um, so now you can see what they look like. These are the ones where I've, I've, I've used the yarn to sort of stuff the tail. And if you make them without them any stuffing in them, they are very, very floppy. <laughs> okay, so let's just put all of the roses out of the way there look how look lovely they look as a bunch of roses make a beautiful posy okay so just going to move those out of the way the um pattern that i'm using is actually another pattern from the voynich manuscript um so because i am trying to show to the world that i can actually read the voynich manuscript so today we're actually doing page F44V. This book here is um, the Voynich Manuscript, which has got photos of the actual book. And the photos are slightly smaller than the original book. So to use it into scale, I'm using a four millimeter crochet hook. And what happens is, is as you make every single step of this particular pattern, it matches somewhere up on the picture and with the text. So what I'm going to do is just move this bit out of the way momentarily and show you how um, I've worked out what the pattern is so the way that it works is it's like a cross grid reference and we look for the clues so we've got two there we've got a seven there we've got a 13 there we've got a three in there okay so and so this is the instructions that I've got and for those that have seen the other videos this is the page where I've got all of the different symbols from the manuscript where I've turned them into UK terms and into US terms so that you can actually understand what we're doing okay so that's all of those instructions quickly and over and done with out of the way so what we're going to do is we're going to begin with a chain of 13 okay so um, I'm using pink yarn today and um, so we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and thirteen into the third chain so one two three we're going to work the double crochet if you're in the us or it's a treble crochet if you're in the uk and the place i got that stitch from was the seventh line up or the seventh line down um, and the third word along actually is to do this stitch and it says to do it with a repeat Okay, so we're doing this as a repeat and we're going to do it all the way to the end of the actual row of chains. So if you was counting them, you would find that you actually make 11 of these stitches just so that you know of the amount of stitches that you're going to create. Okay, and when you make your piece, it's going to look like this. <laughs> um, I'm conscious, obviously, of time. I don't know if, um, if anybody who watches any of my videos, all of my videos are all as if I've done them live. There is no editing in my videos, just so that you're aware of that. Okay, so that is where um, you make the very first piece. So for the row two, so what the instructions are, so I've actually got, so it's actually to do a chain two and turn. So the re where I've got the chain two and turn from is, is the second line down the seventh word. Um, and you've got um, the chain two and we've got this the twist symbol on there, means to turn. The next step is to do step four, which is to do two half double crochets. So because we've already done one chain to start as a stitch, we're going to just, in the very top of the stitch, you're going to just work one half double crochet or half triple crochet, depending where you're from, chain one. And then you're just going to be continue the pattern so you'd actually work two of the half stitches chain one and just keep doing that all the way to the end of this row okay so you're just going to keep doing that repetitively you will end up with 11 so what I'm going to do is move over to the piece where I've actually already got so I've got 10 of these pieces I've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten pairs the 11th one, what you're going to do is you've got your a stitch and the chain at the end. You're just going to do your chain one and then you're going to work into the top of that stitch there and work your two half double or half treble. And that is the end of that row. It looks like that. Then you're going to chain two, turn. You work the half double or the half treble in the top of the stitches that you can see there chain one 
whoops and then you're going to work in between the spaces now so you're going to just do two half double crochet or half treble crochet I've just split my arm there into the chain two spaces and it's just going to do that chain one and just keep doing that repetitively across to the end of the row you do that until you've actually got yourself a piece that looks like this where you've actually got this has got seven rows all together so you've got this row that you did at the beginning which is your double or your treble stitch then you've got your half so if you go one two three four five six seven the reason why I've got seven is because the seven seems to be so significant on here, but it also matches the actual image. Then we've got the step five, which is to do a chain two, and this symbol here means to do a slip stitch if you're in the US, or it's a single crochet if you're in the UK. So what you do is you do a chain two, we're turning obviously because we're doing that, we're going to, into the top of that stitch there, we're just going to slip stitch into there, then you're going to do chain two, and then slip stitch in between the chain in the chain one space and then chain two and do the same so you do that so you've got all the way to the very end of the row and you will end up with a piece that looks like this okay and what you're going to do is the tail end that you started with you're going to thread your needle on it and the other tail end where you finish is where you're going to then fold your piece to make the rows so what you do is you fold this piece so that it comes to there. So you can, as you can see, there's even a little indent where you put that tail end out of the way. And then you fold it that way. And then you fold it again there. And then this last little bit, you're just going to just wrap it around. And as you can see, it instantly makes you a rose. So what you're going to do as well now is, so you, all of these little posts that you've got, can you see that? You're just going to get, literally go straight through the work and come out somewhere the opposite side because we just want to hold it together initially. You're going to need to hold on to it for a bit while you're working. And then you're going to go the other side of the post, if you can see that, and then you're going to come up to the next post along. And you pull it really tightly as you're doing it and you do that all the way around which then creates the centre bit, the stalk part of your actual rows so we're just going to quickly get that sewn together and then what you're going to do to make the green section is you're going to start the pattern again from the beginning but you only begin with a chain of 11 to do that one and when you do the double crochet stitch or the treble crochet stitch then that's where you'll see that you've got um, you'll end up with nine so you're going to put your tail end through the center piece and need to leave these tail ends here temporarily okay so like i was saying with the green section you make the first two rows you start off with a chain of 11 and you make the first two rows as normal the third row what you're going to do is you're going to do a chain of two turn slip stitch into the top of the stitch there where we did before or it's a single crochet in the uk and then what you're going to do is slip stitch or single crochet between so into the chain one space then into the next pair of in your next double you know you've done your two half double and then you're going to do a chain two and slip stitch into the same space so it's slip stitch into the chain space slip stitch into the top of the pair of your stitches from below chain two and slip stitch into the same space and you'll create these little points yep so this is one that i've finished earlier just to try and th speed things up for the video that's what it looks like so the tail end that you began with you're going to thread your needle there and then you what you do is you wrap this so you want to make sure that these posts are matching the post of the stalk so you wrap that around there, move your tail ends, you need those tail ends for a minute, so keep them there. You wrap that around, and the, what you do is, you, the very beginning stitch, you're going to get this one, and you're going to just put your needle through there, just to pull that together. Just so that it's wrapping around this circle and keeping it in place. You'll see that there is a little bit of a gap to start off with, do not worry about that gap. What you're going to do now is go into the rows, and then come up through the actual between the posts i don't know if we can see that very well but we're coming through there 
and doing the same thing so you go around that one and then what you're going to do is you're going to come up into the actual between the posts and then just below the post you've got a little tiny hole you're going to go into that stitch and into the rows and do that all the way around so I'm going to try and do this um, I'm hoping that even though I'm doing it on video and it's I'm doing it quick I hope it turns out exactly the same way and um, move my tail ends out of the way there and you're going to just literally be going into there and into your rows just to hold it all in place I'm sorry if this rose doesn't turn out as perfect as all the other ones because I took my time on the other ones and I've been as you can see making lots of roses because it's just such a beautiful beautiful pattern um, there we go and into there and we've got one more to do and you can so don't worry so we can see we've got a little gap don't worry about that gap okay and you're going to go into there and then you're going to come out through the middle and pull that there so oops I've took the end over and pull that there then you're going to get the other tail end there and we're going to actually thread that onto the needle there and then when you actually look at the rows you'll actually see wherever you've joined it doesn't matter whether you doesn't matter where you've done this bit you get your tail end you can see there's a hole right next to it you're going to put your needle through that hole and come out of the hole that's just above it and pull your needle through there okay and then what you're going to do is on the, the beginning part where you've got your chain two you're going to put your needle through that hole Pull that work nice and tight and then you've got the little hole that you worked underneath you're going to go into there and then come out and the next hole along on the rows and then pull that really really tight and then pick up the next loop and put that into place and then go into there and then into the next hole along you're going to do that all the way around so that you join your you're joining this sepal section to the actual rows there whoops watching i've got my tail entangled in there i'm just going to do it i'm just demonstrating you sewing it together so you can see how perfectly it fits together so that you can see the design of this because whoever actually was doing the Voynich manuscript and writing these crochet patterns was a brilliant crocheter and they used things that they made to actually help them to draw the images and even where they place parts of the text because I can show you if you match up everything um, I did release 12 videos to start off with where I showed um, Lisa Fagan Davis what I was doing when you get to this section here you're sort of coming up into this section there or you can come up into that one I think I prefer there but I've got that one and that one to do so I'm going to go actually over there there and put that through there and she said um so her research that she did she sent me um a copy of the work that she did and so there's five different people that wrote the manuscript and all of the ones that i'm sharing so far have all been done by the first person right so this is my last little one there i know that this one already looks like it's stuck in that's just because of when we begin it so you're going to come through there just to pull that stitch into place and go back down like you would normally but then what you're going to do is you're going to come across and you're going to just actually just go into there and you pull this together by doing this oops going into the chain you're just going to just pull that across there oh i've split that one a bit there that's not very good but i'm leaving it as it is because it's for the sake of the video oh there you go it's joined now <laughs> um and there so that's all joined up and you can see we've got little gaps but don't worry i'm just going to put my tail end through that bit there and then into the actual center of the actual row so that one's done then what you're going to do is you're going to so the the center piece is going to end up being the longest tail end you've got you can pull that a little bit more if you want to have that more curved but we're going to thread the tail end onto the needle like that and then this section here i just noticed that it just fitted perfectly just to there so what you're going to do is put your needle through into the actual rows right next to those little gaps there pull that through Oop, i've got 
my tail end stalk there. Then if you look at your rose, you've got a little hole there. You're going to put your needle through that hole. You fold that piece of work into, which fits perfectly into that little space. And then you get the, just through the chain, go back into the rows and back out through the actual bottom of the rows. And that's how you can make your rose buds all have exactly the same style at the top there. Once you've done that, let me just get my scissors. That's where you're just going to cut off all of these tail ends and move those out of the way. Um, and, oh my gosh. I've forgotten the green to be able to show you how to do the green right so I'm going to start from the other end of this one so what you're going to do to be able to do the actual stalk is you begin with a twist this bit I just did this because this was common sense but if you actually look on the actual pattern itself on the I think it's the second line down and the ninth word it just says around <laughs> um, according to the instructions so you can see we've got this gap so at the side of the gap, you're just going to go in between your posts and come up into the middle and latch on. And I'm doing a single crochet if you're in the US or it's a double crochet if you're in the UK. Then you skip one and then work a stitch into the next one. And then you skip the post, come between the next post and work your single crochet or your double crochet. Skip one, work into the next one. And so you do that and we're going to go right next to this one here. So we end up with five, oops, five stitches. And then you're going to actually, then where the beginning stitch is, you're just going to literally go round and around. And if you do 14 rounds, so if you just start from the beginning, you count till you get to, I think it's um, 60, is it 60, 70 stitches. Um, you will actually end up with your stalk. And so you just keep coming through the middle. Um, it's a bit fiddly when you first get going, but you can do it. So you can see how the actual stalk's being made. I'm not going to carry on and make the stalk all the way to the end because I don't think I've got enough of that yarn. Okay, so once you've done that, where's my other one that's unstuffed? I've lost a rose. <laughs> right, okay, we'll use one of the... Oh, no, here it is. This is my lilac one. So once you've finished and you've actually done your 14 rows, this is what it'll actually look like. I haven't tucked, I haven't finished off the end there. So the way that I did, because it leaves it sticking out. So all you do is you're literally just going to just do a slip stitch through there and pull that through like that, just to finish it off so that that's how you get your tail end. And then the tail end that you've got at the beginning where you begin with, you put your hook all the way through your um, stalk and you pull that tail end through. Okay. So if you want to actually do this section where you actually do so that we get, let me get another rose, hang on. If you want to get the stalk so you end up with a tassel bit on the end, you need to make yourself 10 strands the strands need to be three times the length of your actual rows to make this work. And what you do is you thread your needle. You come in, so you start at the top of, you know, like this bit here. And you come into the actual rows itself. Leave yourself a good amount of the actual tail end sticking out. You want it to all come out. And then you're just going to just put this. Just gonna, you're going to come in and out. Make sure you don't snag your yarn as you're doing this. And you pull that all the way through. Well, what I'm going to do is show you how just to do the top section of it. So you pull that all the way through. You do that till you've actually got 10 of these sticking out all the way around so it matches. And then the other end of it, once you've actually got all of your 10, just so that you could, because this covers up like the purple area, so then what you do is you actually then go into, so you're going to be going through the stitch and you're going to be going into the actual work. So if you come slightly across, I'll just push that through there. What happens is, is that it starts to cover up the actual colour and then you put that through and you just put that. And as you put them all the way through, I'm running out of time and then we're going to run out of time. So I want to say thank you for watching, thank you for liking, thank you for sharing, thank you for subscribing. I'm worried my camera's going to go out on me. But once you've got to all the ends, you pull all the ends nice and tight. It shrinks down the stalk slightly because you can see the length of it. 
Um, but then that's how you do it. And that is literally a rose from the Voynich Manuscript. Okay, so thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for subscribing. Bye for now.